our series of video podcasts, 30 Years, 30 Cases, marking the 30th anniversary of the Academy of European Law. My name is Anastasia Pata. I'm a senior lawyer in the private law section of the Academy. In this podcast, we feature a judgment from the year 2009 in the joint cases number C402-07 and C432-07, also the so-called Sturgeon and other cases. This judgment was delivered by the Court of Justice on the 19th of November 2009 and is a landmark case for consumer protection. These two references for a preliminary ruling concerned the interpretation of regulation number 261-2004 on air passengers' rights and more concretely the concepts of delay, cancellation and extraordinary circumstances and the right compensation in the event of delay. It is my pleasure to welcome and introduce our guest speaker, Mr. Stephen Mason. Mr. Mason is senior counsel at Travel Law in the UK, a company that he founded in 2003. Stephen and Travel Law advise the travel industry on a wide range of regulatory contentious and commercial matters. Top ranked among travel lawyers in the UK in the independent chambers directory for many years, Stephen is frequently invited to speak and write on travel law topics and is also the co-author of the leading textbook, Holiday Law. Mr. Mason, thank you for accepting our invitation. We look forward to your analysis and comments. To start with, could you briefly tell us why Sturgeon is such an important case? Um, well, thank you for that introduction and uh, thank you for the invitation to speak. So uh, there are two reasons really why uh, Sturgeon against Condor and its conjoined case that you mentioned, uh, the Bock case against Air France. Uh, what, there are two reasons why they are so important. And uh, first of all, because they've had a, a, a fundamental impact on passenger rights uh, in connection with flights. And secondly, uh, because they demonstrate for lawyers uh, how the Court of Justice of the European Union is prepared to uh, interpret regulations, even if the wording of the regulations does not strictly say uh, what the interpretation is, nonetheless, they're willing to construe the regulation uh, in a way which favours consumers, even uh, when the wording is not there to support it. What were the actual facts uh, in the main proceedings and what questions were referred for a preliminary ruling by the national courts? So, the uh, actual facts are uh, quite important, so I will just go into them in a little detail. Uh, so, the Sturgeons uh, booked flights from, uh, return flights from Frankfurt in Germany to Toronto in Canada. And when it came to their return journey, they checked in for the return flight, but um, after checking in, they were told that the flight was cancelled. Uh, that word cancelled also appeared on the departure board um, at the airport. Um, they were then uh, given uh, their luggage back and they were taken to a hotel to stay overnight. The next day, they went back to the airport and they checked in at a different desk and uh, they were put on a flight which had the same number as uh, the flight from the previous day. Um, and there wasn't uh, any additional uh, flight uh, that day. Um, they had different seats from those which were originally allocated. Uh, when they got back to Frankfurt, it was 25 hours later than uh, the original schedule should have provided for. So they were quite late. Um, so uh, those are the facts. And uh, the Sturgeons brought a claim in the German courts, and the German courts referred the matter to the CJEU. And there were three questions which arose. Before I say what those three questions are, I should say that um, cancellation is defined in the regulation 261 as meaning the non-operation of a flight which was previously planned and on which at least one place was reserved. And I should then say that as far as delay is concerned, there is no definition of the word delay 
in the regulation. So with that background, what were the three questions? The three questions were, one, whether a flight delay must be regarded as a flight cancellation for the purposes of regulation 261, where the delay is long. Uh, second question, whether the regulation must be interpreted as meaning that passengers whose flights are delayed may um, receive compensation as laid down in Article 7 of the regulation. Uh, in other words, treated as passengers whose flights are cancelled, because, just to be clear, the, if a flight is cancelled, there is a right to compensation in certain circumstances. If a flight is delayed, and you read the wording of the regulation, it does not provide for compensation at all. And the third question, which was raised to the Court of Justice, uh, arose out of the fact that um, Condor, the airline, said that the reason for the delay was extraordinary circumstances, namely technical difficulties with the flight. And the question for the Court of Justice was whether that was a defence to a claim, the facts of which were as I have outlined. So presumably the court decided that, that long delays were the same as cancellations? Actually, uh, no, they didn't. Um, in answer to the first question, they decided that cancellations and delay remain two different things. And they emphasised in particular that um, cancellation uh, is, uh, happens when uh, a flight which was previously planned uh, and on which at least one place was reserved doesn't operate. Whereas if a flight still runs in accordance with uh, the planning for it, albeit with a later departure, um, that was a delay and not a cancellation. And so uh, they said the two, the two concepts are uh, completely different and uh, are not uh, the same thing at all. And the fact, as I outlined earlier, that someone told them at the airport that it was cancelled and the fact that, that the departure board said it was cancelled and, and the luggage was given back to them and all the other things I mentioned before, the Court of Justice said doesn't make any difference. It, it could just be uh, uh, somebody um, using language uh, without precision, or, or, um, or it could just be a misunderstanding. The facts are the facts. Either the flight was a pre-planned flight or it wasn't, and that is the difference. So um, they said there were differences, but, when they turned um, to the second question, that is, if there is a long delay, does that entitle the consumer, the passenger, to compensation? There, they decided that the similarity between the damage caused by uh, a long delay and the damage caused by a cancellation is identical. They pointed out that the, first, the very first recital to EC261 says that its purpose is a high level of consumer protection and that that's the overriding aim of it. And that therefore the court felt that in interpreting uh, that requirement and in bearing in mind that the damage caused by consumers was the same and in bearing in mind also although this is a minor point, the Court of Justice felt that it was important, um, that in the uh, definition of what is um, uh, exceptional circumstances, uh, which would be a defence to a claim, um, they said there, there is reference um, to delay as well as uh, cancellation, and that therefore, um, that it gives the green light to the court to say that the consequence, even though the concept of delay and cancellation are separate, the consequences to consumers are the same, and therefore the remedies available to consumers should be the same. So that was the approach they took. 
for the sake of completeness, I should also say that the third argument which was put before the court, namely that the technical difficulties um, uh, which caused the delay, the Court of Justice did not deal with it in any detail because there had been a previous uh, court decision called Wallentin Herman, which had gone into that issue in very great detail and to sum it up very briefly, had said that technical difficulties are very rarely going to be a defence to a claim for cancellation and therefore now also for delay. So they decided that consumers who suffered a delay of at least three hours um, in their arrival time at the destination uh, should receive compensation in line with the compensation set out in Article 7 of the regulation, which, as a lot of people already know, there are three bands, 250 euros and 400 and 600 euros, depending on the, the length of the flight. What has been the major impact of this judgment? So the major impact has, of course, been on uh, passenger rights. Um, it has been a massive uh, boon for passengers who suffer delay. And uh, the fact of the matter is that historically, delay has been a much more common problem which consumers encounter than cancellation or indeed denied boarding the other the other area which this regulation uh, deals with. So uh, it has um, it has been so massive that a whole industry has in fact set up around uh, delay claims. And uh, in the UK and in other countries as well, uh, I believe, there have, be have sprung up specialist law firms which exist uh, purely to bring airline delay claims against airlines on behalf of passengers and consumers, sometimes as individual claims, sometimes as group actions. And um, uh, passenger rights are being enforced in this way. It, it is um, uh, also another thing on a practical level is because of the three hour cutoff, uh, which I mentioned before, um, it, it's been a, there's been a factor whereby when airplanes arrive at their destination airport with like five minutes to go before the three hours runs out. There is quite a bustle then, quite a rush to make sure that the doors are open, which another case decides is the moment uh, when the uh, the plane has arrived for these purposes. Um, and the jetty is in place to allow passengers to exit the plane before the three hours has run out. So that's become quite a common feature of life um, in aviation in, in, within the EU. So um, those are um, some of the uh, consequences that there have been uh, of this decision. But the main one is that um, passengers are much better protected than they were. Last question. How have the airlines reacted to this judgment? Well, the airlines were, shall we say, not pleased uh, with uh, this decision. And indeed, a couple of years later, a group of airlines, including Lufthansa, TUI and um, British Airways, uh, took a case to the Grand Chamber of the Court of Justice to suggest that the Sturgeon case was uh, ultra vires. In other words, it exceeded the powers of the Court of Justice uh, because of the way which it approached the wording or the lack of wording in the regulation about delay and compensation. However, the airlines lost that case, and so the Sturgeon case has ruled supreme um, since that time. It, it is a matter, I think, of some disappointment that whereas, um, for example, in many um, train companies, if there is a delay, it is extremely easy for consumers to obtain compensation for that, for that long delay with almost just one click of the mouse on their computers. Um, with airline delays, the airlines have continued to put barriers in the way of consumers making claims. And so the battles have continued with the law firms I mentioned earlier and with consumers on one side and with airlines um, on 
the other. But I think, and I don't want to tar all the airlines with the same brush. There are some notable airlines of whom what I've just said is true, but there are also uh, some airlines who have taken their new responsibilities since Sturgeon very much on board and uh, complied with it uh, very willingly and very fully.